Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about the real world. We're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, and we're going to talk about an extremely important statement by Simon Almer in the film Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. And his statement was, this isn't some fairy time, this isn't some fairyland bedtime story. This is the real world. What does that statement mean in Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves? I'm going to have a conversation that explores the meaning of that statement here. All right. So, um, so boy, oh boy, let's get into it, right? So first of all, um, this conversation is exploration. Hi, my name is Scott Garibay. When I'm right and I know I'm right, I'm going to tell you. Really good. And when I'm wrong and I know I'm wrong. I'm going to tell you. And sometimes I, you know, like I talk, I have, um, full stakes conversations on this, uh, on this, on this channel. And I really enjoy discussing. I, I you're never going to find a no spoiler, you know, like, uh, you're never, whenever I possibly can. And there's a reason to have a full throated conversation on anything. I'm going to have the most full throated conversation I can. Right. And, but I just want to explain, but this conversation specifically is an exploration, right? I'm not saying I'm right on this. I'm saying, let's look at this in full context and I'm presenting a possibility here, right? So just understand that, right? I'm not positive of this. This is an explore. this is an explorative conversation, all right? And this is what I think, okay? Let's go, all right. Simon said, Simon Almer, the, the, the specific descendant of Elminster, Forgotten Realms Elminster, right? The great, great, great grandson of, uh, you know, of Elminster. Maybe there's an extra great in there. Um, is, or two, um, you know, is discussing it. And so basically there comes this point where, um, you know, Holga and Edgin and Doric are like, why don't you just magic us there, right? Actually, why don't you get us into Castle into Castle Neverwinter's Castle Never's vault, right? Which is in Neverwinter, and uh, you know, and he's like, no, you know, there's a limit to magics, right? I can't just break um, the arcane seal of Morden Canaan, the greatest wizard who ever lived, right? I can't just break his seal. There are limits to magic, and he says something fascinating. He says, this isn't some fairyland bedtime story. This is the real world. Right, and I think people who stop thinking, people who went in are like, "Oh, I assure you, Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves is a blockbuster popcorn summer film, and it is not a very robust conversation of science, theology, politics, and philosophy." Okay, they won't allow themselves to see the depths of the film. Right, this movie was made by high artists. Right, like this is high art. There's real depth here. Right. And so what I'm saying is people who stop thinking, they're like, oh, Simon is discussing that from the perspective of his character in the movie, right? Like, is, 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 is discussing that from the perspective of a resident of the Forgotten Realms, right? He's a native to the Forgotten Realms. He's not talking about our real world, the IRL real world. But I'm telling you, that's exactly what it may be, right? That when Simon says that, He's actually saying the real world, Earth, IRL, the real world, right? Now, how on earth could he say that, and why on earth would he say that, all right? Let's get into it, right? So, I am positing, it is my opinion, that Simon is that when he says the real world, he actually means this world, the IRL world where you and I are sitting right now. Why would he say that? How could he say that? How could he get to that point, right? So first of all, how would how would Simon even be aware of our IRL world, right? Well, people are not unpacking this. The inclusion of the 1983 cartoon characters in the Dungeons & Dragons film, the ramifications of it are massive. What you need to understand is, all right, you need to understand this. Bobby and Sheila, okay? Hank and Eric, Presto and Diana, they are not regular play. They are not just, you know, Dungeons and Dragons characters, right? 
The 1983 Dungeons and Dragons cartoon shows you in every single episode they are IRL players who are brought into the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. They then are told by Dungeon Master, right? And this was put out between Hasbro and um, and Paramount Pictures that that Dungeon Master has an open conversation and tells and tells these 1983 car- cartoon characters. He says, "Listen, he's acknowledging they're from the IRL Earth, right? They're not reg- They're not. They are literally Dungeons and Dragons players who are sucked into the realm of Dungeons and Dragons." Dungeon Master then used them to do a whole bunch of quests and push back Venger. And then he has a conversation that says, listen, you guys are not going to get back to Earth. When you are adults, you will not be in the realm of Dungeons & Dragons. You will be in Forgotten Realms, the literal default setting of D&D. He shows it to them, right? Link below for that video, right? And so he shows it to them, right? And, And... so the reality is Dungeon Master knows there's a real world, right? And he's saying you guys are players from that real world where Dungeons and Dragons is played, right? Simon Armour is on his path to being a powerful wizard. He has almost certainly is aware of the multiverse. He has almost certainly talked to Liliana, the planeswalker from Arcavios, right? Who is connected to... Um, the Strixhaven School and is connected to Dominaria and Kaladesh and Fortnite and every world that is connected to Dungeons and Dragons directly through Magic the Gathering. Do you, are you fully seeing this? Right? So when Simon Armour says this isn't some fairy to- you know, fairyland bedtime story, this is the real world. In my humble opinion, he literally means this IRL world because he is aware of it, right? Now, again, you're like, Scott, that's really, that's risky to even talk about. Why would you say, you know, why would you even go down this road and say this, right? And the reason why is the risks that Gary Gygax took, right? It is astounding to really consider what Gary Gygax did in 1983 when he made the cartoon, right? In 1983, when the when the cartoon was released, they were in the middle of the manic. They were literally in the middle of the satanic panic. There were there were parents who were shouting and saying, "Oh my gosh, this is not right." They were saying, "We think this game will trap our children and never release them." Right? We think it's going to help them cast real spells, which could move them between worlds. Right? That we think this will help them talk to creatures who are not of this world, right? Supernatural creatures. They were literally concerned with this, these, these evangelical Christian parents, right? And Gary's response to that was said, what if what if I make a show that like validated every single concern you have and showed you that your kids could get trapped in the game, right? And so, in my humble opinion, Gary was taking risks and he was pushing right up to the point where it was very clear, right, that the lessons learned in Dungeons & Dragons could be used directly for people who were playing Dungeons and & Dragons because the real world and the fantasy world were mixed, right? If you're paying attention to what the 1983 Dungeons & Dragons cartoon characters, which Hasbro is double, tripling, and quadrupling down on, right, the ramifications of them being in the movie are absolutely astounding. And in my humble opinion, what it really means is that when Simon Armour said this isn't a fairyland bedtime story, this is the real world, what he actually meant was our world, this world that you and I sit in, and, and a recognition that D&D sits connected to and full and is and in and the Forgotten Realms are in a porous one centimeter away, right, across the supernatural planes connected to the IRO world. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.